Today I'm going to show you how to create the Blade Runner look for a photo. Hello my friends, my name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So as you can see here we have a very nice look onto the harbor in Hong Kong and this is the original photo that we are starting with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create an adjustment layer for HSL. I'm going to use that to reduce the saturation of the picture uh, quite a bit because I want to use my own colors. And then I'm also creating a curve adjustment layers um, to adjust the contrast basically. So I want to make the darker area darker and the brighter area is a little bit brighter in my picture. So I do it like this as you can see. That is good. That's nice. Okay. The next thing is that we want to change the atmosphere of the city to more of a sci-fi dystopian atmosphere. So to do that, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and drag a rectangle out over all of the picture. And I'm going to set that to overlay. And you can see this changes completely the light situation of our city and of course you can change any time in your working process the fill color to any kind of different setting color feeling that you want to have for your city. The next thing that we want to have are these nice colorful glowing sci-fi lights. The way to do this is I will click on my original layer with the picture and I will go to select tonal range and highlights because this will only select the areas where there is bright light in my picture. Then I go back to select and click on grow and shrink and I will grow it by 10 pixels. Um, this depends on how big the resolution of your picture is. My resolution is full HD 1080p. So I get this result from 10 pixels. Again, I go to select. This time I select feather and I select feather and set it to 15 pixels plus. There we go. And we have this nice faded um, selection. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is to create a pixel layer and set it on the upper top of all the layers and change it to screen. There we go. Next thing we need to do is select our paintbrush tool and I want to set this to a normal round layer like this. Um, I want to have the hardness 25%. That's okay. We will change the size. Opacity 100%, flow 100%. That's nice. The next thing we need to do is click here on color and click on the upper circle here twice to open this window. And I would suggest from all these selections you have here from the pop down window, select HSL color wheel because this allows you to really quickly change your color while keeping the brightness. You can see here it's fading from the color either to black or to white. So you can set a brightness for your color and then start to paint in what you want to paint. So I will make my brush bigger and you can see already uh, when I move my brush over the scene that I can have interesting lights and this bill with the color wheel allow me to quickly change the color of the lights. I want to keep it in the area between um, red and blue so it's not getting too colorful, it's not getting too crazy. Um, so let's start by painting in some lights here on different areas of the picture. Let's see, what well, we'll maybe make this a little bit less bright. There we go. Uh, paint in different areas here, this here. Make this again less bright here in the background because these lights are further away. So let's use different tones back here. Bring in a little bit of violet. Um, here we have this kind of ship. Uh, let's take some red colors too. Maybe down here on that area. Some blue colors. When you have you realized that when you watch TV or have a screen on, often from the outside it looks like blue light. I'm not sure why it's always blue. 
probably because a lot of the scenes that we watch on TV are blue, but it's kind of curious. It's pretty interesting uh, that you have this kind of blue aura. Um, so as you can see, we have created a lot of different lights uh, in our scene. Maybe not overdo it. Create one more here. And um, another thing that I want to do now, I deselect my selection. You can see we have some nice lights. We will still adjust them, so don't worry, we're not done yet. Um, I will give a smaller size to my brush. And, whoops, clicked on the wrong area. So, like this. And then uh, let's now use maybe green as a color. Or, let's see. Yeah, that seems good. So now you can see that I have this uh, small brush. What you can do is you can click once and then hold your shift key, click another time, and this will create a straight line. And we will use this to quickly fill these lines up here. So we have basically a glowing outline um, to our to these lines on the tower. Uh, don't worry that they are too bright at the moment. We will adjust them in a second. I'm almost done. And you can see this gives the whole building a real cool sci-fi look. There we go. And one more here. Okay, nice. So the next thing that we are going to do is over here on effects for our layer. We are going to click on Gaussian blur and set this uh, five pixels seems to be good that's okay and then we can also reduce um, the opacity of the layer a little bit uh, to make it less extreme maybe set this to 70 there we go and now what i want to do is i will duplicate this layer so we have one on top of each other and i will here have the blur a lot stronger set it to 15 and then I will use outer glow radius a little bit and then reduce the opacity quite a bit like this and also reduce the opacity here and you will see you can see that this makes the light a lot more glowy than it has been before. So that's a pretty interesting effect. Okay, now another thing that you can see here is that we have these kind of traffic situations down here and I want to paint them in two. So we create another layer and I will again set it to screen. And this time I go to brushes and I'm going to select the spray paint brushes and I'm going to select this one because it makes these nice points. I'm going to set my color to white. There we go. And I will click once just to have a test or maybe make a little streak. You can see here we have these kind of color drips. And I'm again going to effects. And with Gaussian blur, I can adjust them until I have um, like a nice blur like this. And you can see the benefit of that is that we have an uneven light. So that is pretty nice to have. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Like this, maybe reduce the blur a little bit. This this seems to be good. Okay, now with uh, uh, Control A, I select everything, delete. I will delete what I've created on that layer so far. Control D to deselect. And now I can just paint in uh, the areas where there is some traffic on my um, on my screen, on my photo. There we go. Like this, you can even click. You don't have to drag your mouse. Maybe clicking gives you a little bit less color. That's nice. Um, okay, so now that we have done this, I will go down here uh, on my effects for that layer and activate color overlay and double click on that. And this will enable me to change the color of the brush strokes that we have just done. I think my program is stuck. Does it not do anything? One second. There we go. There we go, very nice. Uh, so we have a yellow color. I will reduce that a little bit. Um, 
this is a nice traffic kind of light color so that's nice a street light color maybe it's a better description let's reduce the brightness of that so there's just a little bit of that okay so the next thing that we need to do is to add some fog to the city because it's a sci-fi city. There is millions or billions of people living in one city. So there's a lot of smog and industry and all this kind of dystopian look. So uh, we're going over here to the brushes and I'm going to select the free smoke Photoshop brushes 5. I'm going to link them in the video description. So don't worry, uh, you can get them no problem. And I will create a new layer, of course. There we go. And with my brush, of course, there we go. You can see some really intense fog. So I will click once and I will click another time over here. And of course, this is a lot too extreme, but not a problem. We will just reduce the opacity, set this to 29% in this case. And another thing that we are going to do is to switch over to a normal brush again, normal round brush like this, setting the color to black. There we go. And I'm going to create a mask now. Um, move it onto my fog layer. So it's like this, it's inside here. And uh, with my brush, uh, let's set this a little bit bigger. Set the opacity to maybe, uh, let's set it to 40%. This looks good. And I will just go over some of the buildings real quick so they stand out a little bit from the fog a little bit more than usual and also it makes the fog be a little bit less uniform so that's pretty nice and of course we can still reduce the fog a little bit there we go and now we can go back to our curves and adjust the brightness even more uh, so this is helping us getting the look that we want to have this was not what i was intending to do There we go. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty sci-fi. Very nice city. And again, like I said, you can now still come in here if you want to, um, selecting the rectangle tool and changing the fill color. Uh, for example, I don't know, like this when you have green, I mean, this is not maybe the ideal color, but you can see you can quickly change the atmosphere of the complete picture. So that's pretty nice. And this is how you create, um, let's go to the original color. There we go. This is how you create the Blade Runner look for a photo. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. If you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my files with all the layers. I can give you feedback on your own creations and we can talk about episodes, tutorials, that might be interesting for you in the future. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye.